This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org forward slash donate. For as little as $10 a month, you can help people find life-changing guidance. Welcome to Believing Future. Important insights from Habib Omar bin Hathir into how to raise the next generation of believers. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Welcome back to this podcast, the fourth episode of Believing Future. And where we left off last time was uh, talking about marriage, talking about the choice of spouse and making the deen, making the religion, making a person's connection to Allah the priority when choosing a spouse. And we're just carrying on from there, really, um, you know, emphasizing that this is you know the qualities we 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 look in and we seek in our in our spouses will be will, will dictate and will determine how our households are established and how then our children are raised. That's why it's important to cover these and talk about these things before we even talk about raising children. And an important point to consider is that good qualities, good traits are inherited; they're passed down. In the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He likened people to minerals Or base metals And Nas kama'adin He said that the, 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 like, People are like minerals or base metals Deposited in the earth They have these qualities You know that, 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 it's like Sunk into them Everyone has different God-given properties and values um, Some are like gold Some are like silver Some are like all these different uh, you know, minerals that are placed in the earth. Some are, are, are very extremely valuable, some are extremely rare, some are, are more common, and some are more, uh, some are more useful than others. Um, this applies to everyone, regardless of whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim. And then, but then he said, so if they become Muslim, the good qualities they possessed are just merely enhanced on condition, on one condition, that they gain knowledge. This is a hadith narrated by Bukhari and Muslim and others that that these good qualities that are inherent in someone will, will merely be enhanced by Islam. And we see that in the companions. We see that in, 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 uh, in, 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 in even in, uh, you know, our, day, our, our own lives. We'll see people accept Islam and the beautiful qualities that they had are just enhanced and magnified by Islam, but with the condition that they gain knowledge. Either faqah, they get fiqh, they get, they get uh, uh, you know, at, at least a... Um, at least a basic understanding of the deen of priorities of values and of the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu so that's something that should be kept in mind when choosing a spouse that these qualities that they have that, that, that are buried in us that, that come out these akhlaq which uh, make up our internal um, landscape you could say and the Prophet Sallallahu also pointed to a fact which has only recently been confirmed by gen genetics Namely, that children inherit their parents' moral, physical, and intellectual characteristics. Not just, not just physical. Not, you know, obviously we um, always look to see. You know, she, you look at a baby and say, "Oh, she looks like her. It looks like her mother. It looks like her father. Or whatever." But more, more than that is that also the, the, the intellectual, the, 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 the internal qualities, the akhlaq and things. They inherit these things. So when you, when the selection of a spouse is based upon no, noble birth. On honor and uprightness, these things will be will be passed down to the children if the if the right conditions are are are, are, are made. Um, and when when these qualities are combined with the best upbringing, so the, if the conditions are right, the best upbringing is there. The, the child can attain the highest levels of good character and taqwa. Um, and in the past. And Hiroma makes the point, Hafiz Allah, that in the past the choice of spouse was made after consulting elders, consulting parents, elders, people of knowledge and wisdom. Uh, and and, that, and that's not, that was just in marriages, in all, in, in, in just in their daily affairs. If we look at the, the traditional societies, traditional Islamic societies, uh, there was this concept of, of mushawara, of, of, uh, of, of consulting the people of knowledge, consulting the elders, going back to them on, on even 
relatively insignificant things. You know, is this the best time to do this? Is this, is this the best? And, and certainly more in the more insignificant things. Is it, is it is it the right is the right time to get married now? Is this the best choice? Is it the good, should I go into business with this person? Um, is this a good time to travel to do this? To do, you know, there was that co concept of of having elders and having. Uh, whether they within the family or outside of, of scholars of, of righteous people that they consult who's istishara and istikhara so they have istikhara they have istishara which is cons consultation istikhara which is con con you know consulting Allah but you make you make your own istikhara and you also you ask other people to make istikhara for you and that way you get uh, your, you know, the choice that you make is is blessed and it's it's not just on your own um um and it's not just you know in our in our in our day and age it's you know I just met someone met someone at work or or at university and I like the look of them and you know that's 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 not that's quite distant from the traditional way it's not they're not to say the good can't come out of that but but it's 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 um it's, it's less um based upon on on this insight and upon this this guidance in the in the tradition. Because um, then, then they'll ask for guy. They might ask for for direction, but they only they're only seeking it from from what they what they want essentially. It's already decided. There was already an attraction there. There's already, um, you know. So they just want confirmation in a sense. Um, generally speaking, it's preferred to marry someone who's not been married before. In terms of, in terms of choice of spouse, it's better. It's preferred to marry someone who's not been married before, as this is more conducive to making the marriage last. Uh, a person tends to form a strong, intimate bond with their first partner. Whereas if they had been married before, they'll always be making comparisons between the first and second partner. And the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned this in a number of notions. However, that's, this is not a hard and fast rule. There's been many, many fruitful marriages between couples who have been previously married. And there's also, there's also stigma about this, unfortunately, in many societies and many communities to this day. But, but many, many blessed and fruitful marriages have come about from, uh, from when one or other uh, of the uh, parties has been married before and the greatest proof of course is in the marriages of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Aisha was the only one of his wives who had not been previously married of all the other wives all the other wives all the, all the women that he married the Ummahat al Mu'mineen may Allah be pleased with them all she was the only one that had not previously been married and she actually was that, that was her kind of boast and she claimed superiority over, the, over her co-wives due to that fact that she was the only one who, was, who had not been married before but the reality was that her her high station and her position was not from that was not from the fact that she hadn't been married, but it was rather from um, it was rather from um, you know her intelligence, her understanding of the Prophet her knowledge, her uh, her you know the, the contribution that she was the Prophet knew that she would then make to to preserving. His sun and and, and 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 teaching his sunnah. So, so Sayyidah Khadija, without doubt, was the best of the Prophet's wives. Sayyidah Aisha was uh, after that was 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 the most beloved of of, of his wives, uh, Sayyidah Aisha radiAllahu anha. But it was it was not due to the fact that she hadn't been married before. It was due to the fact of, of the qualities that she had and the qualities that Prophet could see in her. Again, choice of choice comes into it again. What are the qualities? The Prophet could see that intelligence, that ability to uh, to absorb and, and retain and convey knowledge and all the other qu beautiful qualities that she had and a sign of her, her, her honesty and her integrity is that she narrates her own jealousy towards Khadija who she never met and the Prophet's undying love and loyalty to his first wife as a portrait. Yeah, she a lot of the, 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 the hadith, we have thousands of hadith, you know, she's one of the most prolific, prolific narrators of hadith, Sayyidah Aisha and of, she narrates things which, are, which are don't, don't aren't in her favor, you know, which, which is a sign of her, her honesty and integrity. She, she, narrates, she narrates how she was jealous of Khadija, she narrates, she, she narrates the, 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 highest, the high rank of other people around her, other, 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 other wives and other members of the family of the Prophet ﷺ, such as Sayyidah Fatima. So, so that's a sign of her honesty and integrity. And we seek refuge from those who say anything uh, unpleasant about her, radiallahu anha. Um, and the fact is that the Prophet's wives did not attain their lofty status as mothers, mothers of the believers through, through the qualities which they possessed or the deeds which they performed. That, that has a part of it, but it was, it's istighfar it's, it's at the end of the day. It's Allah choosing them. There were also great women from the, among the Muhajireen and the Ansar uh, who, who rushed to accept Islam, who, who might have become Muslim before the wives of the Prophet ﷺ. They were similar in their actions, they were similar in their states, similar in their qualities, but they did, they, the, the Ummahat al-Mu'mineen attained their status through their closeness to the Prophet himself, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. As soon as he married them, they were they, they attained this crown of being 
Umm al Mu'mineen, as being which every they become the mother of every single believer from until the till the till the end of time. And this is God's selection. Allah chooses what He wishes. God chooses whoever He pleases for Himself and guides towards Himself those who turn to Him. So the Prophet's wives were chosen. You know this concept of choice, which is which <coughs> we're talking about. That they, they were chosen in order to in order that they could convey affairs relating to women and family. Okay, that's one one element of it. That they they narrated things about the Prophet Sallallahu in the household which other companions and other people didn't have access to, especially Sayyidah Aisha, but not just, not, not exclusively Sayyidah Aisha. Others mentioned things that they'd experienced and they'd seen from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Some of them had their own children from previous husbands and, and had no one to care for them, such as Umm Habiba, whose husband had left Islam, and Umm Salama, whose husband had been martyred. Okay, and, and, and often that was the case. That the Prophet was actually taking them to his care, taking these women to his, his care who had lost uh, their husbands and were in difficult situations. Other marriages were contracted in order to unite tribes and to spread Islam and to show its universality. Um, another beautiful example of um, choice selection, choice and choosing the best partner is when Sayyidina Umar, his daughter Sayyidina Hafsa radiallahu anha wa an abiha, um, she, was, um, she was widowed. Her husband was, had died shortly after Badr. And her father said Umar was immediately seeking to find her another husband, seek someone to, to marry her. And this, is, this, is, this, is, and this tells us about the society they lived in. It was as soon as someone uh, was lost their husband, as soon as the woman was, was, was widowed or lost her husband, there was uh, an effort was made and, uh, to, to seek uh, another husband for her, and it was, was accepted. There was, no, there was no stigma that they were marrying a widow. It was, it was, there was a, there was a very um, uh, that was the nature of the society. Marriage was was conducted was was contracted and conducted with ease, and there was there was less of these, um, you know, difficulties that, we, that later um, later cultures have kind of put in place. Um, so Sayyidina Umar goes out. He wants to he wants a husband for Hafsa, his his, his beloved daughter Hafsa, and that shows you the care of the other father as well. They want the best for their for their daughters for their children, for male and female. They want them to best to have the best of partners, the best qualities that we've already mentioned. Um, so he goes out and he goes, who's the first person? He goes to Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. He asks Sayyidina Abu Bakr, you know, would you, would you, um, sorry, he goes to Uthman first. He goes to Uthman first. Um, and asks Uthman, you know, would you be interested in, in marrying my daughter? Because Sayyidina Uthman had just lost his own wife, Sayyidina Ruqayya, the daughter of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She died just as the Prophet came back from Badr, Sayyidina Ruqayya. May Allah's blessings be upon her. She had passed away, so Uthman was had been left with that, uh, lost his wife, and you know. So, so Uthman, uh, Omar went to Uthman and said, "Will you marry my Hafsa?" And Uthman um, said, "You know, give me some time. Give me some time." He didn't respond, and this this kind of upset Omar, uh, you know, a, a little bit. You know, he'd ex he expect you know, more of a response from Uthman. Then he went to Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiAllahu anhu, and asked him, "What, what would you think about?" Uh, would you accept? Would you accept? Would you think about um, taking Hafsa as your as your wife? And Abu Bakr um, again didn't respond. Didn't give him an answer. And then said, "No, Umar was well, upset. You know, he'd gone to the, the you know these close companions of the Prophet that he loved and he loved and looked up to and respected. And the Prophet loved and respected Uthman and Abu Bakr. And neither of them had given him an answer. So he went to complain to the Prophet He went to complain." You know, he, he thought he'd, found, he'd gone to the best possible people and ex expecting them to, to accept and they hadn't and he was um, upset by that. So he went to the Prophet Sallallahu and what did the Prophet say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? That perhaps that Allah Hafsa will marry someone better than, than Uthman or even, or even Abu Bakr and perhaps Uthman will marry someone who is better than her, meaning better than Hafsa. So perhaps, perhaps someone who is better than Uthman will marry Hafsa, Hafsa and perhaps someone who is better than Uthman um, will marry, uh, or perhaps someone better than Hafsa will marry Uthman. Sorry, I'm just getting confused here. So perhaps someone who is better than, uh, than, than Uthman will marry Hafsa and perhaps someone who is better than Uthman will marry um, 
than someone who's better than Hafsa Umar Uthman. And of course, who is that? The Prophet himself وسلم, married Hafsa, someone who's better than Uthman, the best of all people, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, marries Hafsa and she becomes Umm al Mu'mineen. And uh, Umm Kulthum marries, the Prophet وسلم, marries his daughter Umm Kulthum to Uthman. And of course, she's better than, she's a daughter of the Prophet, وسلم, she's better than, than Hafsa. Uh, but that's how the Prophet وسلم, brought this, the things together. And uh, and he said about Uthman that if, you know, again, choosing who is the best of spouses, he, he married, first he married Ruqayya to Uthman, and when she died, he married Umm Kulthum to Uthman. And he said that had I had a, another daughter, I would marry, I would marry them. And married Uthman. That shows him the love he had for Uthman and the status that he and the respect they had for Uthman. Uh, again, choice. The choice here. The key thing is the choice. Um, and he's for that reason he's known as the Nurain. You know, the, the possessor of the two lights. He had first he had Ruqayya, then he had Um Kulthum. And so, 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 and finally another example of 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 marrying a uh, marrying a woman who's been married previously is the story of Jabir. Bin Abdullah radiallahu anhu ma Jabir was a, was a young companion the Prophet sallallahu loved very much and, and cared for and again very significant in in preserving the deen and conveying hadith and uh, many many stories we have the Jabir but he was once returning from an expedition with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the Prophet asked Jabir if he was he had married if he got married and he said yes I got married he said did you marry a woman who had been um, previously married or not what 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 kind of woman did you marry and Jabir says, um, I married um, an, an, an older woman, a mature woman who'd previously been married. And the Prophet said, why didn't you marry a, a young, uh, you know, a young woman that you could have fun with and who's closer to you in age and uh, closer to you? And he said that um, his father had been martyred. His father Abdullah had been martyred at Uhud, leaving behind seven, not, no less than seven daughters. Okay, so he had seven. He had seven sisters. So uh, Jabir has seven sisters, and he wanted to marry a, a mature woman who could help to raise him. Not 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 a young woman who was the same age as, as perhaps his his sisters, but a, a mature woman who could help in that help to raise it, the difficult job of again tarbiyah. This is this is what we're going to be talking about. The, 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 the difficult job of, of raising children. It needed a, a mature woman. Not to say a young woman can't do that, but someone who's got that experience, who could help him with. This responsibility that was now on him of raising and nurturing these these his his his, his sisters, so Jabir very nobly gave up gave the welfare gave the welfare and upbringing of his sisters priority over his own, it's perhaps his own desire for a younger younger woman, and you know, he gave priority to to the tarbia over his own um, pleasure and his own uh, perhaps his own preference. So he chose this uh, mature woman who had previously been married, and and the Prophet Sallallahu confirmed him. Confirmed that he'd done the right thing and affirmed what he'd done. So these are just some 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 examples from the Prophet and his companions um, on this concept of choosing, making the best choice of spouse, and then inshallah establishing and laying the ground, and laying paving the way for um, uh, for the, the um, making the best conditions for tarbiya for children to be raised in the best of ways. And when peace and blessings be upon our Prophet and all his companions. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Visit seekersguidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit seekersguidance.org forward slash donate, and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, whoever guides someone to goodness will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.